Okay, we're watching Gamerberg. I was playing Brigitte on Ilios, and this is plat three, I think. I would open by saying this is the fourth time that I am recording this video. I initially did a 30 minute video, it got corrupted. I did another 20 minute video, that got corrupted. I did a 15 minute one, and that got corrupted. I think I figured out the issues. I'm trying again. I wrote up I wrote, I wrote up the whole thing and then I just I was like, ugh. You know, it is <laughs> it, you know, there are some questions that OP had around like specifically like hey, how the bad is it really? I really can't answer these questions without doing the video. I think it's very obvious in the video and it's easier for me to demonstrate than it's just simply saying you made a lot of mistakes. So we will go through this for the fourth time and I'm praying that this does not have any issues. Okay, for starters, um, one of the things I mentioned from uh, is that Holy Shift Kid's a really good resource on YouTube to learn about Brig. And Holy Shift Kid says that for Brig, you should save your shield bash for mobility to get out, to get yourself out of bad situations, and to some extent to help your teammates. You should almost never use the bash just to do more damage. And I strongly agree with that as well. And you're going to see that mistake consistently throughout this replay where you're like, hey, I have bash, let me use it. And you do 50 damage. Well, who cares? Like Your swings already do, like I think, over 50 damage a second. So unless you need the burst to, to kill someone and secure a kill, don't use bash for damage. Right? Very, very important. So right now you violate the rule because you immediately use bash to move forwards. You had no idea what was around this corner. Okay, they could have had, for example, Ryan, Lucio, Reaper, Cassidy, who are about to run into you, like or Junkrat, and then you're just dead. Like you would have died right now from bashing forwards. Like this is the kind of stuff. Like you don't need to do this. Just chill. Just play behind your tank. Right, the point of your tank is to take space. All right, Doofus goes in, punches your your hog. Hog clearly doesn't want to be there. Right, Doofus punched him in. Now your job in this game is to keep the Reaper away from your team. I'm dead serious when I say you could win a game just constantly whipshotting the Reaper away. Whipshot comes up every four seconds. It is very, very frustrating for Reaper. Reaper does, at this, at this area, Reaper does probably 150, 175 damage per second, okay? Back here, maybe 100 damage per second. Back here, 40 damage a second, okay? That's the difference between here and then whipshot back here you can cut his damage by literally like two thirds. That's the way you should think of it, okay? Your job here is to keep the Reaper off your hog to give your hog space to hook. Again, you bash into the Doom, which I don't think you should have done. Great, great, whip shot the Reaper. Just hold this corner. All you do is hold this corner. But what you're gonna end up doing is you go in. This is not your job. You are not like a diving tank. It is not your job in here to fight two strong close range, three strong strong close range heroes, right? Doomfist, Reaper, Baptiste can all beat you at close range. And I know you're new to Overwatch because we talked about that separately, but that's the kind of stuff you need to learn is for the opposing heroes, are they strong at close range? Are they strong at long range? Like, can I beat them? You have to understand that matchup. And to some extent, it might be better for you to simply play more heroes, right? And get used to their kits to get a feel for like what to do. A lot of this feels like you don't actually even care. Like, all these could be faceless, like, enemies, and you would do the exact same thing because you're not thinking about what abilities they have, right? You're just going in to go in so you can swing at stuff. So you go in, you get put in a really bad position, you get slammed into a wall, you should be dead right now. Again, if the Reaper turned here, you would have just died instantly and not even had a chance to do anything. But you see that the Reaper is going to go absolutely ham on your hog, right? Again, dropping your hog super low, forcing breather. Your hog is unable to hook or do anything right now because the Reaper's been on him the entire time. And meanwhile, you're just getting pummeled inside of the room, doing nothing. Like, nothing here you're doing is of value. I want to be very clear here. The second you step into this room, right, the Doom's like, oh, okay, I'm going to kill the support, right? Then you go out here, do 50 damage, great. What's, what's the big deal? Now you're doing 35 damage a swing? Who cares? Nothing matters. Like, your team just got walked over. All you had to do was keep the Reaper back to win this fight. And it's hard for you to know that because you're new. But I'm telling you, all you had to do was keep the Reaper away from your hog to give your tog hog space. And that would give you the best chance of succeeding. So that happens. So we go back forwards. I do not recommend fighting Duke Fists like this. It's very lucky that you ended up getting the kill. Now you're in a three, a 5v3 scenario, okay? This is like should be an instant easy win. All right? This is like an easy, easy win. You're up two people. But look at you leave your team for no reason, okay? That's you in the front. You see how you bash away? You're going on the left side, you're just looking at the left for no reason. You see this Reaper over here killing your team, kills the Junkrat, comes over, and you're like, oh, look, hey, there's stuff happening behind me. You should have known this the entire time, assuming you're wearing a headset. You're not wearing a headset, for sure, wear a headset. But you heard the shooting. They're clearly still attacking here. Like, you can hear your team fighting, and then you can, this Baptiste over here, you can hear that shooting too. Like, you're just ignoring everything that's going on back here to, I don't know, attack the lighthouse. 
right? All of this stuff is happening back here that you're ignoring. Then, when you finally come back to this fight, you you whip the the Reaper back, which is great. Then you bash into him. The Reaper as a Reaper, I'd be thrilled. I'm like, okay, cool. When you bash me backwards, I have no real way to kill you. After this, okay. If you hold shield, it'll literally take me like 10 seconds plus to kill you. But the second you walk forward, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna kill you in three hits. All right? You're lucky that he whiffs as many shots as he does right here because you're just dead. Then it's a five on two, okay? Or four on two, four on two. Your junk rate, oh, actually, no, your junk rate gets res, right? It's a five on two right now against just the Reaper and the Mercy. The Reaper wraiths, all you have to do is follow the Reaper because he's gonna come out and he's gonna ulti or try to shoot and kill him. Instead, he goes to the left, you go to the right for, I don't know what reason, because you clearly see him on the left. It's not like you lost track of him. You see him on the left because I saw you throw the whip shot. Then you hide behind this pillar for, I don't know what reason. Then you come back over, then he pops ulti. And because you didn't help damage him, the Reaper is not nearly low enough and he kills your whole team. Then, the fight is over, right? You just lost four team members, you're not going to win this fight, you have to die as soon as possible. But instead, you try to survive, then you die and get massively staggered. Look at the top right. Look at your team. All three of them just spawned right now. Now the hog has spawned. Hello. And now you have spawned. And that is how much time that you just lost. In a game where time is everything, you just lost your team another 10 seconds by just like trying to survive there for no reason. Okay, so you go up here. You're at 165, and you pop Rally. So I don't know if you knew this, but Rally is a line of sight ability. It means it only gives people healing if you can see them. So let's look and see who's going to get healing here. Can your Risa get healing? No, because she's blocked by the stair. Can your Cassie get healing? Nope, because he's blocked by the bridge. Can your Reaper get, get healing? No, he's, he's through multiple walls. Can your Mercy get healing? No, your Mercy is in their spawn. Why would you pop Rally here? This is not this is not gonna be effective. This is not gonna do anything. You've completely wasted your ultimate right now by, by by popping rally. Okay? No one's gonna make use of this at all. The best time to pop rally is when you have five people a few seconds before you go in. Then you pop rally and then you get huge value. Because rally heals like 15 health a second or something like that. 15 to 30. So you're looking at you know 75 health or I should I should really know this by heart. But a good chunk of healing uh, at that moment in time. Right to your whole team, and it's over health, so you can heal more than their actual maximum health. But right now, your rally is doing nothing. It, the doom in their backline is what is what forces this. But you didn't; it wasn't even forced. Like you were not going to die to the doom. And again, I think that's because you don't have experience. Like you don't know how much damage the doom does. The doom had zero chance of killing you. Then the doom blocks, and then you charge block for no reason. Again, he has like ninety-five percent damage reduction. It does no damage to him. Now remember the doom as an empowered punch. Okay, remember that for a few seconds from now. You see your reaper in the front line. You see rates. And you see him get insta-killed by the Powered Punch. That's your fault. Reaper's out of position, to be clear. Reaper's out of position, shouldn't have been there, but that's your fault. Then, watch this, okay? First, you try to jump over this fence, which is not a good idea anyway, because then you would have been in the middle of three different heroes, plus the Mercy, so four different heroes, from all angles who would have just obliterated you. You're very lucky you did not go over that fence, number one. Number two, watch what happens. So the first thing is that you don't stay with your Arisa. The Arisa crosses. Is it about the cross? Right? You should play up. Who cares about the Baptiste? Baptiste is not a problem. Okay? You are Arisa's going right now, and you're not quick enough to follow. Arisa goes in, gets a kill. Okay? Then you bash. There are three eligible targets. You missed all three of them. Instead of going to the right, where they're clearly all tracking your Arisa, you go to the left, where they were not moving. Then... You have the ability to simply recover here and walk like this and attack, 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 make sure Sojourn dies, and then get invisible uh, line of sight of your Orisa to be able to heal her. Instead, you take this really long, wide route, which takes so long, and then your Orisa dies. The moment that your Orisa dies, look at how many charges, health pack charges you have. Right now, you have two health pack charges, which is 300 health that you could have given your Orisa here and you didn't give her any health because you were busy trying to attack people on the side and doing a very poor job of it. So again, once your tank is dead, the fight's usually over. Right? At this point, nothing really matters. Oh, yeah, this is this is, this is where it gets even worse. So again, your Risa's dead, fine. Maybe we can turn this fight. You see your Cassidy's low. This is not just a replay thing. You can always see teammates through walls. You see your Cassidy is low right now. You have the opportunity to heal. 
Actually, sorry. You actually see it even earlier than this. So... Again, like, you're trying so hard to kill this Doom, which is not gonna die. Right here, you saw that Cassidy was low. You should have turned to the right and healed the Cassidy. Okay? Instead, you don't. Right? You get punched back. And then you heal the Reaper instead of the Cassidy, and he dies. Then... You ignore the Reaper, go over here, and go out, and the Reaper kills your other Reaper. I'm going to show you what that looks like from the top-down perspective, and just show you just how bad this is. So, watch. All right, so Reaper's low. You Notice that you have line of sight right now. You could have healed him with a health pack charge, which would have changed everything. Still here, still here, still here. Still has gun healing. Dies. Okay, great. At least at this point, you've made a mistake. Fine. Kill the Reaper, and then and then go back in. Now watch this. You see how their Reaper just killed your Reaper? Now, granted, this is a mistake. Your Reaper's whiffing really bad here. But why not just walk over here, do one melee swing, kill him, and come back and heal your Reaper? You know, like, it's not like you can't hear this happening behind you. The Doomfist is at full health with overhealing here. Not quite full health, but, like, effectively full health here. There's no chance you have at killing this Doom. And instead, you're just letting your backline die over and over and over again. Right? That's that's why you lose. So I'm gonna show you at second point to, to, to demonstrate just how badly it goes in second point too. Alright, you reaper dies here really quickly. Now I'll time you could do. Your Ramacha steps forward, does his job, makes base. Okay, whip shot here to farm fire. Great. That's fine. Everything is okay, so fine. Then you decide to go and fight the, the Reaper, okay? This Reaper is being pocketed by the Mercy. There's no world, I don't care if you're a top 500 Brig and this is like a silver level Reaper, you cannot win this, like mathematically, you cannot win this fight. It is impossible. If the Reaper stood still and did nothing, you would not be able to out damage the, the Mercy healing in a reasonable amount of time. You just don't do enough damage. Okay, again, you like sort of try to fight this, you miss your whip shot, and then you die. I would like to say that is the only death that you have here, but that is not the case. The very similar situation is going to happen right after this. So you go up, you heal your Ramatra, right here Ramatra again, attacking, you whip shot, okay, that's fine. You use the shield bash right there. Remember that. You just use shield bash to get 50 damage in. That's all. That's all you got out of it. Reaper's here. You really need to get out now, because the Reaper kills you at close range, as we just learned. Okay, Reaper, you get you get punched in. Shield bash would save you. Shield bash, turn, whip shot, walk, get the mega. Okay? But oh hey, you don't have shield bash because you wasted it, and then you die. Okay, let's watch your next life out. So again, he blocks, he comes over. Okay, you just use shield bash. You saw that you just used shield bash, right? Bam, knocked off. Great, shield bash on. Oh, wait, you can't because you use shield bash. Again, is the 50 damage from shield bash all that valuable compared to all these times you could have saved your teammates or yourselves? Like, basically every single one of your deaths you could prevent if you had shield bash. Right, late to the party. So right here, this is also super bad. Again, you're like attacking the Mercy, and the, the Soldier's gonna die. Okay? So right here, you see the Soldier's on high ground, getting attacked. So let's watch the Soldier, right? Fighting, 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 slides, comes in, comes after supports, dies. At no point in time did she get healing. But what were you doing during this period of time that was so valuable that it was more important than not healing your teammate? Did it seem like anything you did there? All right, let's let's wind it back again. Did it seem like anything you're doing right now is more important than healing your soldier? You're just swinging at the wall, right? Missing whip shots, right? Sort of hitting the Valk Mercy. Yeah, I mean, again, like you're new to the game, I and mean, I'm not trying to be like super mean to you. I'm just trying to clarify, like you really don't look like you know how to play Brig. It's actually very surprising to me that you're plat. I I'm not sure if you actually got the to Brig to to plat playing Brig or not, but there's like a wide gap between like where you need to where you are now and where you need to be as Brig to keep climbing or, or even probably stay your rank. Like I would guess if you keep playing Brig exclusively right now, you're probably gonna win only about twenty to twenty five percent of your games. Um to be to be honest. So and like that's kind of the interesting thing, right? If you want to get better at Brig, just keep playing Brig. Even if you're gonna lose games, it's okay. And I, I that happened to me. Like when I played, for example, I like one trick Diva for a while in Overwatch One because I want to get good at her. And I was originally GM. I started I started one tricking Diva and I lost like 700, 800 SR. So I went from GM all the way down to like mid slash low diamond. 
and then I climbed most of the way back up as D.Va because I figured out like how to play D.Va. So if you want to play Brig and you want to get better at Grig, go, go right ahead. Like I don't think you have to switch unless you want to win. If you want to win, then play your best hero, right? But like there's a limit to like how far you can run that unless you want to one-trick a hero forever. But in terms of like expected value output, you're nowhere close to where you need to be as Brig. So again, overall big summary is focus on your team more and on the enemy team less. Stop trying to pick fights with them, right? Stop trying to go and get killed because you're not even good at reading when you can get kills. So instead focus on what does my team need? Who needs healing? Who needs peeling? Who do they need me, me to bodyguard, right? That's the valuable stuff that you can do as Brig that will influence and win games, not trying to hunt people down for kills in, in the neutral phase. Hopefully that's helpful. And hopefully this video doesn't get corrupted.